Today on Amara Woman Magazine, we'll find out what's new with Gamecock football legend and former NFL recruit Marcus Lattimore. And summertime is the best time to get your child's well doctor visits. And pediatrician Dr. Greg Barabell is here to tell you why. And it's happened again. Another black man dies from injuries sustained while in police custody, this time in Baltimore, where protesters took to the streets and civil unrest prompted a state of emergency. What is going on? All this and more today on Amara Woman Magazine. Well, ladies, here we are in the same place again. It seems that we are always on this topic. There's been another, yet another incident of a black man dying at the hands of a police. Now, we've talked about, you know, deadly force and should there be an acceptable standard, reasonable standard for the use of deadly force, and there really should be. But what is going on with the number of African-American unarmed men that we are seeing dying at the hands of police. Well, Wendy, first of all, I just want to share with you uh, that I don't think it's a new phenomenon. Mm -hmm. I think this has been going on for many, many, many years. Um, I remember as a child um, when my father would see a young African-American male pulled over by the police, he would make us stop and he would get out of the car and watch what the officer was doing. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, I was always afraid. And my dad would say, we got to make sure that they treat the little brother right. That's mm -hmm. what my dad would always tell me. Wow. And um, so this is this is nothing new. What is new is that we now have video cameras. Right. right. And right. I think it's coming to light right now. I mean, it started, I guess, the earliest I could remember is with Rodney King mm -hmm. back in 1991 yeah. when mm -hmm. the um, gentleman took the videotape from his apartment and we don't have like video cameras but now we have camera phones oh, yeah. and those Everybody came out yes mm -hmm. and those came out in I think 2002 and they got really popular where everyone had them in 2005 so now people are taking pictures of this police conduct and um, you know it's always been a problem um, I think of uh, some law enforcement not all law enforcement believe that they are the law mm -hmm. you know they are they, they decide if you're guilty or not guilty and enforce punishment right there and it, it, it's just an absolute epidemic and I think it's now coming to light and people are now realizing that you know some of the police they all are not protecting and serving yeah and um, it's it's uh, I'm glad it's coming to light I am glad about the protest uh, not the violent protest right. but I think if people do not protest that nothing would be done yeah. and I think uh, with Baltimore taking swift action which uh, Columbia South Carolina which I am proud of taking swift action mm -hmm. um, with LeVar Jones mm -hmm. and, and that police officer uh, being charged with I believe second-degree murder mm -hmm. that um, people are now recognizing that this is a problem and a problem that needs to be addressed yeah mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's hard to believe we're talking about it again, again. this yes. Every month, time. Yeah, again this after month. we were just talking about right. it last month, month with what happened in, mm -hmm. in North Charleston, and mm -hmm. um, it's just a travesty. It yeah. really is. And, and, for, um, and, and for the, think about the African American men that are afraid, you know, I listen yeah. to my sons and they talk and the fear that has gripped them if they get pulled over just for a traffic mm -hmm. stop, you know, mm -hmm. and so you don't know what is going to incur just from a traffic traffic stop. So it has become an epidemic, and I think we can continue to talk about the problem over and over. But we've got to have some serious discuss discussions on how are we going to correct this yeah, and right. fix this. And, um, it, and I know you said protesting is one, and we've got to come up with some structures and some some things to put in place to fix this because it has now gotten really out of hand. Too many moms are losing their boys and too many communities are losing their sons and we can't just let this continue to go 
and like Kelly says, because of the, the videos now, it's shedding light on it. But this has been something yeah. that has been be going their on. Word against it's you. been going on a long time, mm -hmm. you know, a long time. Well, I think um, part of the solution and what I'm really um, happy about is now the officers are going to be wearing body cameras. Right. I oh, think yeah. that, that's a good step. And it's a good step because, you know, not only does it protect the citizens, it protects the police officers, too. Absolutely. That's right. Um, you know, so that you have an accurate account of exactly what is going on. Um, so I think that's a positive mm -hmm. step. I mm -hmm. think um, training, more training by police officers is always good um, and, and things of that nature. I think when you're educated, you know, something that my Angelo used to say is that when you know better, you, you do, do better. better. Right. So education is, is, is important here. And um, so that's yes. a good step. I mean, I agree. I think, and I said it before, they need to have culture diversity training because, mm -hmm. again, right. if you were raised in a certain, um, you know, neighborhood and then you have to protect and serve a culture that you're not familiar right. with, mm -hmm. then all you can go by is what you saw on TV. Right. You don't right. have any experience. Mm -hmm. So this uh, culture diversity training, I think will really help. Mm -hmm. And another thing I think um, would help is accountability. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I think a lot of times in these incidences, and I have to say South Carolina stepped up. And in, 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 in the, the twice, team, like twice, twice. in the recent yeah. past, and, and thank God one was not fatal, the other was. But it, it, at least there was no hesitation. At, at least whenever that video came out, it was immediate action. Mm -hmm. And I think, and even before the video, the the officer was terminated, uh, the mm -hmm. state trooper, mm -hmm. by you know the person over the state troopers for South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So we, I think, accountability is important. No matter what we do, if we continue to let a few, and I'm going to say it's a few, I hope mm -hmm. it's just a few, mm -hmm. police take advantage of the power that they have and misuse and abuse it mm -hmm. with no accountability, then you can never correct the problem. Because they said that this isn't about black versus white, it's there is a code blue. And mm -hmm. there is this protection of the police by the police, even when they know that they're wrong. And I think that has to stop. And the only way that stops is that we charge people and they pay for their crimes mm -hmm. like everybody else. Because mm -hmm. if, if any one of us would do something and we break the law, we would have to be held accountable. So why are police different? Why should they have a higher standard in terms of we have to do X, Y, Z to prove that they killed somebody? You know, they were saying in the case of Freddie Gray that he killed himself. Did y'all hear? They were saying that he he was flailing around in the in the in the, in the, um, in the van that was transporting him, and that he somehow did it to himself. I mean, I just thought that was ridiculous. ridiculous. Kelly, you're an attorney. Baltimore is one of the cities where they do their own investigation when incidents like this happen. Let's um, get your take on that. Well, you know, basically, I just don't understand how the police could investigate the police. I mean, you know, you go to internal affairs and you have buddies checking out what other buddies are doing. And as Wendy had talked about, there's a code blue in which, you know, uh, there's a kind of good buddy system going on with the police department. I think that you need an independent agency. Mm -hmm policing the police, a, a third party. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, you know, something like SLED, which we have here, but some sort of um, enforcement other than from the city of Baltimore, other than from the city of North Charleston in these areas, so that you could have an objective and thorough investigation. I think that is critical, absolutely critical. So, um, I didn't know that though. Yeah. I didn't realize that the police or investigating the police. I just we do I that thought it was independent. County. It's that's true here. Wow. This is the yeah. only county in the state where the sheriff investigates his own people. Oh. Yeah. So when, when you, you have they're trying so, to pass a law to change. So when them. you have officers mm -hmm. that bring again bring illegal actions against um, of the victims, they're also being investigated by their peers. Right. Exactly. So right. a lot can be peer, lost. Peer review. Yeah. Yeah. Peer review. Yeah. A lot can be lost through the process. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's really not fair um, to do it that way to the family who suffered the loss. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. they they already feel I mean, 
we, we know the police are vested with power. They legally carry guns, they legally enforce the law. So to give them, um, whenever there's a question about their fair and fair enforcement of the law, mm -hmm. that needs to come away from them. And that's the thing I think was really important that mm -hmm. the state's attorney did in Baltimore. She did her own parallel investigation. She did mm -hmm. not just rely upon what the police were doing internally. Mm -hmm. She sent her own folks out okay. to investigate them mm -hmm. and came up with the set of charges that she did. And some people have criticized her for that. And they have criticized her, but you know, that's why we have a court of law. Exactly. If, in fact, the charges don't stick or he's, they're found not guilty on certain charges and some charges they are, then that's why we have a judicial system. Mm -hmm. So I have no problem with her. You know, people are charged with a lot of things. Right. And then you go to court and you see what they're guilty of and what they're not guilty of. But certainly something happened to Freddie Gray in the yes, back of that yes. van and it needs to be put before a court of law by the jury of their peers, not police officers, mm -hmm. but a jury of their yeah. peers in the community, and then they will render, I believe, a just decision based on the facts that are brought before the jury. And, a lot and of that camera was broken. Have... There was a camera. Was it? Yeah, it was. In the yeah, and they said mm -hmm. suddenly it wasn't filming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you guys see the mama that gave her son? What for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And she caught some grief for that, you know. But you know, they said the police said, "Come down here and get your children." You and know, she did and just she that. She came down there she and forcefully got, got her son. Yes, she you know, did. And she said, it "Might have saved his life." Yeah, that's right. I, th I think uh, I think she's a hero, and uh, yes. I think any of us should stand in judgment. I mean, she was right there. It was a very hostile environment. Mm -hmm. And like you said, she didn't want her son to be next. Mm -hmm. And that's what she said. And she actually caught him in the action because mm -hmm. he had a rock. Yeah. And he was getting ready to throw at the police. And, and that was totally against what she what she advised him on. And so she, she reacted because it was a hostile environment there. And she was getting her son out of it. So, But my question is, what shall become of us? Mm. With all of this happening, what shall become of us? Well, we have to make some changes, and I, you know, a lot of people say that you know the people in Baltimore were wrong for the riot or whatever you want to call it. And well, I, violence is never the answer. No, it, 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 it's never, not. it never right. is. It never. That is. was a double injury it to that a, community. Yes, that it shot was. Yes, it, I don't. But you know, we don't have to. That. We don't have to condone it to understand it. Uh, exactly. You know, we don't have to point. condone it to understand it. I understand it. that I understand frustration. It, yeah. I understand that level of hopelessness that you, you end up doing something destructive to your own community right. because you feel that's the only platform that you have right. to get the attention of the nation that's to right. what's been happening to you, not just today not with just Freddie today. Gray, but right. every day. Right. And I think that is, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't make sense to most people, but how many of us react in anger? When we're right. angry, we don't do things that usually make a lot of sense. That's right. right. And hey. Angela and I had a little exchange <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook, and I was reacting to some things that I saw Talk, that I yeah. felt were not telling the whole story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because we respect one another, mm -hmm. she was able to come, and we had a commentary, and, and I said, let me take a step back. Mm -hmm. and, and and feel what she's feeling and see sure. what she's saying. Well, I wish and everybody I, could do that. You know, and I, I, I just, um, Donna and I, it, I, I think it just brought us so much closer. We're already close. But I have a lot of respect for her. Okay, and I'm interested. What were you guys <laughs> talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about what was the controversy Baltimore. here? We were, it was, it okay. was a Facebook post that I had about Baltimore and Freddie Gray and some of the things that were going on. Okay. And so, in the end, there is a point to this, you know, it taught me that if we all approach things with some respect right. and mm -hmm. truly seeking another person's heart mm -hmm. and, and to take that step back and say, okay, you know, well, maybe this wasn't appropriate or I didn't mean to do any harm, yeah. but, you know, somebody may have taken that a different kind of way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so let me take a step back. Let me be respectful. Let me hear because that's what that violence was all about yeah really. that was a whole heard. community wanting to be heard mm -hmm. and so I just think that you know we have to be really really careful and remember that this country was founded 
through protest. Yeah. And right. not all of it was peaceful. That's true. That's right. <laughs> not all of it was peaceful. Well, when we come back, we have a real treat for you. Marcus Lattimore will be joining us, so stay with us. Ooh, hey. <laughs> if I got to go to college, oh my goodness. I like discovering new things. You get to see what works for you and what doesn't. That helps you evolve as a person. You get to make like a, a supernova of skill or talent or whatever it is. I've always wanted to go to college. I just feel like that's my destiny. My name is Queen, and I am your dividend. Welcome back. We are thrilled to have with us today Marcus Lattimore. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. So we're all Gamecock fans here. I have yes, my garnet and black on today in honor of Marcus. <laughs> and we certainly enjoyed the years that you played football at USC and the mm -hmm. tremendous job that you did there. Right. So we just wanted to check in with you and see what you're up to these days. And we understand congratulations are in order. Yeah. yeah. That is, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Smile. Yeah. I've known this since I've been 14, so oh, wow. it had to be right, right? All yeah. right. Oh, but yeah, right. I proposed two weeks ago. I got oh. engaged. Uh, to my the love of my life, Miranda Bailey. Oh, oh so Miranda! To, yeah, it's awesome, but uh, I'm back in school now. I made the hard decision to retire about six months ago from the NFL. Uh, I was out out there with the San Francisco 49ers. Had a great career playing football, but the people that I had in my life, they taught me that there's more to life than football. Yes. So. I'm back in school getting my degree in public health and oh, awesome. learning a lot about the value of health and that's right. the, on the population in South Carolina and individually. So I'm excited about it and I got two more semesters and I'll be done. Oh, wow. oh congratulations. Wow. So, wow. <laughs> so how do you um, like what you're doing now? I know that you have a foundation. Tell us a little bit about right. that. Yeah, I started my foundation about two years ago. Mm -hmm. and. Um, it was me and my stepdad actually who who actually started it and you do a lot of thinking when you're in the surgery bed. I had two mm -hmm. two knee injuries as you yeah. guys know. Mm -hmm. And um I want to help I want to help people. Mm -hmm. I mean that's my main mission and the the main mission is helping high school senior athletes who have big injuries, major injuries like the one I had. Mm -hmm. We provide that cost if the insur insurance doesn't provide it. Wow. Yeah. And that's how me and Select Health, First Choice Fit, that's how we correlate together. And um, I'm just so excited to be working with those guys. And uh, through my foundation, we actually built the community playground wow. in Swanberg. Oh, wow. so, so that was awesome. And you know, just seeing the smiles mm -hmm. on those kids' face after we built that playground was awesome. And um, we, we got a lot more things coming up. So. Uh, just stay tuned and yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll be around. It's interesting about the uh, the work that you do with Select Health and, and wellness and the, I mean they got a perfect spokesperson. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about that work because I know you said they're involved in the foundation. Right. We uh, we actually came together. We run football camps. First Choice Fit football camps. We got a few coming up June 6th in Spartanburg, June 20th in Charleston and August 8th in Myrtle Beach. Oh, so uh, wow. we, we run football camps, uh, just promoting health, you know, staying fit, but we also, um, I'm also a spokesperson for them, uh, for the well visit campaign that they do have. And, uh, we, we just encourage kids to make sure they get their well visits mm -hmm. and, because it's so important. Yes. I mean, me personally being on Medicaid growing up, I know how much I benefited from that being able to go to a doctor every year. So uh, working with First Choice has been a blast. Everybody is first class. <laughs> first Choice, first class. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're right. Wow. So you mentioned about um, life after football. What? How do you prepare through your foundation, um, the athletes, to prepare for life after mm -hmm. the sports, and just in case it doesn't pan out? It, you, you hit it right on the head. That's that's one of the main missions. Mm -hmm. And we recently 
maybe two months ago had a seminar called My Career After the Game. Mm -hmm. And we went in depth with about 400 to 500 athletes in the state of South Carolina. We did one in Columbia and we also did one in um, in, in Spartanburg, excuse me. And um, we talked to them about, we talked to them about NCAA preparation, mm -hmm. uh, professionalism, looking somebody in the eye, mm -hmm. you know, proper handshake, mm -hmm. job interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, we went through everything it takes, you know, to, to succeed in life. Yes. And you know, all the athletes think that just they're gonna play forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they think it'll never end. Mm -hmm. But they look at me and they see it can end just like that. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, I use my experiences through my foundation to help other kids because I've seen it all. I'm mm -hmm. from South Carolina. I, I think they'll listen to me. So. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure you get their attention. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. I just want to commend you for your accomplishments, and you are such a good role model. Yes, I mean. Is. Just even um, just everything that you're about, and you're very humble, and I just really admire you for that. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it it came from my background. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm from Duncan, South Carolina, three thousand people, <laughs> small town. <laughs> but I I was fortunate enough to have great teachers, great coaches, just great mentors around me mm -hmm. that helped me to get to where I am today. So. I commend all of them. I thank all of them. That's that's why I am who I am, and that's just me. A lot of people would have, after an injury like the one that you sustained, after a life-changing career right. like the one that you made, mm -hmm. a lot of people would have handled it so very differently. Absolutely. But yet you've taken that and made it a positive, and now outreaching to other young people. I mean, there's a lesson in that. You must have been raised right. <laughs> I, I, I had a great mama. Oh, no. I can say that. And, wow. you know, when I remember when that injury happened mm -hmm. and I was sitting in the hospital after it happened and they told me, we're going to try to get you to walk again. Oh, wow. gosh. I mean, they put it all into perspective yeah. right there. Yeah. You know, I, I, I have a great life. I'm blessed to be able to walk. I'm blessed yes. to be able to do the things wow. I do. And I give back to the state of South Carolina for the rest of my life. So. Wow. Well, we are the so fortunate us. to have you here are. in the yeah. state of South Carolina, giving Thank back you. and setting a good example as a role model to not only young people, but for some of those of, of us who are not so young. <laughs> <laughs> what a my back story. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what a my back story. We're so glad to have you join us. Thank you. And don't make yourself a stranger. Come, here. Come back Come and see back us. And, see us again. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> and bring that beautiful um, fiance with I you will. the next time you come. Yes. So when we come back, we're gonna take a break and we'll be back with Dr. Greg Baravel. So don't touch that dial with that remote. We'll be right back. <laughs> All in together now, we can make it better now. Come on. Moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier. Search We Can to find out more. Welcome back. We are delighted to have with us today in studio Dr. Greg Farabell. Now, Dr. Farabell, you are a pediatrician, yes. board certified, board certified pediatrician. medical director, first uh, first choice by Select Health. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for being with us. It's great to be here. Well, you know, it's that time of the year with summer just around the corner, where lots of kids are going to be in their pediatrician's office with little yeah. injuries. Mm -hmm. But you are focused more on well visits for kids, particularly during the summer. Why? Why is that? Well, the uh, you know Marcus knows that um, you know, he practiced with a playbook mm -hmm. before the game, so he had everything in his hand and his head to know what to do when he encountered something on the field. And getting a well check is pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's your doctor being able to give you that playbook for life, so that you know what to anticipate as child's growing, as they're learning, and as they're going off the world and becoming independent. Okay. What kind of uh, tests are given during a child's well visit? And so, you know, there's not necessarily a specific um, test. We, uh, we do go by the Bright Futures guidelines by the American Academy of Pediatrics. Okay. And there are certain um, tests, but it's more about the, the things that you talk about with okay. the kids, the parents, the families to kind of prepare them for that next step and, and growing up. Um, so, yeah, I really wanted to um, stress the fact that the, the well child check is not about, it's not about the tests okay. or shots that you're going to give, but it's having that continuous relationship yes. with someone that knows you and that you know them as well. Now, as the medical director for um, Select Health, 
first choice by Select Health, mm. uh, there's really a focus on, you know, well visits and wellness. You know, why is that? Is that a requirement or is that just something that you as a community do in, in the company? Um, you know, it's, it's best practice. Mm. It's really the way to help <clears throat> people grow. Um, and grow well, grow strong, um, to make sure they're eating right, that they're being active, and that they're really getting the most benefit that they can out of life. So, um, how you having? How's your success rate as far as communicating that to the community to, to get the children in there? Well, with Marcus's help, it's really been phenomenal. Uh, he's such a he's great a real draw. <laughs> he's he's, yeah. a, he's an amazing draw, and people really listen to him. Um, so, it's been great to have him partner with us to really talk about the importance of that well visit, of going to your doctor every year, even when there's not something necessarily wrong, yeah. um, but having that be a part of you know, every single year of your life. It's really full circle for him because he mentioned that while he was young, he was a Medicaid uh, mm -hmm. client, and as a result, you know, he understands the importance of those visits and staying healthy. I mean, look at Absolutely, and it's something that you know, the well visits are provided. There's no copay. There's no cost on you know, the part of the parent or the family. You know, we don't want to put any barriers in the way to making sure that every child gets the care that they deserve. Now, what age is the cutoff, maybe where they stop seeing the pediatrician and, and see like a family practice physician? Yeah, and I think that's, it's almost an individual decision between, um, you know, a child and their family and the, and the doctor. Mm -hmm. Having that relationship is the most important thing. And I hope all of you ladies have a primary care doctor we you're seeing do. every year. We do. We do. <laughs> because no matter what age you are, having a relationship with a physician, someone who knows you, and that, you know, if something does go wrong or something needs attention, they already know who you are as a person. They know what your background is, you know, and how you kind of look at your health and health care and the best way to get you towards being healthy again. Well, we want to thank you for coming, um, Dr. Barabell. And uh, we want to definitely encourage those viewers out there to make sure that during the summer the kids are getting those well visits. Thanks for joining us. Thank, thank you so you. much. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All in together now. We can make it better now. Moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier. Search We Can to find out more. Well, that completes our show today. We hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something that truly empowers you. And remember, you can watch Amara Woman magazine on television the fourth Sunday of every month, or you can catch us anytime on our website at amarawoman.com. Don't forget to like Amara Woman magazine on Facebook. And follow Amara Woman Magazine on Twitter. And a shout out to you, Jessica and Wendy, Yay. for sending us those healthy selfie pics. Thank you. <laughs> well, until the next time, peace and blessings.